Welcome everyone to the No Good Podcast. Today we are joined by an illustrious MMA guest. Yes, Vincent Morales. First and foremost, Vince, how are you? I hope you and your loved ones are doing well during the pandemic. Uh, pandemic's been a little iffy. <laughs> Vegas is uh, up and down a little bit, but uh, making the most of it. Thankfully, I can still train and everything, so I'm holding my sanity. That's totally understandable. That's that's the most you can do during these times, to be honest. That's all, that's the most you could do. Yeah, really. uh, but me, I'm not like Jeff. I'm not super into MMA. I'm I'm just getting into there myself. You know, I'm, I'm finally getting into the sport. I'm loving it a lot. So I got to ask you this. Like, what was the deciding factor in wanting you to become a fighter? Like, what was that initial pull? Uh, the At its core, I believe it was uh, the need to compete. Um, growing up in high school, I started wrestling. And then afterwards, I just kind of... I still had that fire to compete, but there was n- nothing really for wrestling if you're not if you're not wrestling in college. And uh, I didn't get a sc- didn't get a scholarship, so I couldn't afford that. So uh, I stumbled into an MMA ro- MMA room from uh, in my hometown, Ontario, Oregon, and uh, yeah, fell in love. I was hooked immediately. And fast forward like seven years later, here we are. Wow. So Vince, are you are, insane? Are you one of those guys who really like watches the sport a lot, or are you more just kind of you like the experience of actually like physically competing type of thing? Uh, but I'm a fan too. So I literally watch like anytime there's a fight, I'm watching the entire card. That's just how I am. Uh, unless nice. something comes up or I'm in between places, I'm catching, I'm catching like 90% of the card. So. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're, there, there's a few guys I know for sure that like, just won't watch fights in general. They just kind of like, uh, they just like competing and stuff. I, I get that too. But, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely interesting to, to see that. Cause I know some guys maybe, I don't know, gets in their head or something, but Vince, there was a you know a couple fights ago against uh, Chris Gutierrez, where you were on the receiving end of like, I guess you could say MMA's latest trend in yeah. the calf kicks and everything. I um, say I, I, uh, I was on the starting end of that trend. Yeah, <laughs> it was it, it it looked. I mean, you absorbed a lot more than most people. So to so fair play to you, man. Um, I've never experienced them personally. Um, I could imagine that the hair because obviously leg kicks hurt. But for anybody who's like never trained or competed or anything, can you kind of describe what it does to you? Like because I think it's so new that people haven't even even had a chance to really understand what exactly it's doing to fighters. It's, it's, it's this weird crippling. If you've ever been hit in the body or got the wind knocked out of you, um, it's similar to that, which is very weird considering it had nothing to do with like lungs getting hit or your body's time against ground or anything like that. Uh, mm-hmm. does this weird thing where it clangs on your shin and your calf and you feel it in your soul just a little bit as hard as Gutierrez kick. Uh, I felt that one deep and I, I literally still have some, uh, lasting damage from that fight. And that was, uh, over a year ago. Yeah. Wow, really? So have you heard of other fighters dealing with similar things like that? Uh, a, a few. I, I, I'm not too certain what their issues were. Uh, for me, I had some of the fascia rip around my shin. So I have, I have muscle peeking through where it's normally st- more structurally sound. So uh, for me, yeah, I just got some, it, nothing you can really do about it. Um, just one of my, I know a Muay Thai fighter, he was telling me, yeah, there's nothing you can do. He's been fighting for years and He's got shins just like mine, where it's got like this little bump right in the front. So is there anything in terms of like um, preparation, maybe like, because obviously, you know, a lot of people condition their shins and their thighs for kicks. Uh, but is there anything like that your coaches or anybody has said, like, maybe that could be done differently to kind of help uh, defend them a little bit better? Primarily, number one, don't get hit by them, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, uh, easier said than done. Um, I think uh Going into this fight, I knew the guy, this, my recent fight, actually, he, I knew Draco threw really good calf kicks as well. So I was like, okay, great. That's because that was my issue in the past, past fight. I didn't, I didn't train properly to avoid him. I wasn't, wasn't really in a regular training schedule because that was right when COVID was starting. Um, I didn't, didn't have enough time to fix that the way I would have liked beforehand. Uh, this time we had plenty of time. I could see them coming a lot better. I'm um, still working on, on the checking aspect. I'd rather just not get hit. So, but as, as you're fading out of that range, you can still catch the tail end of that kick. And uh, sometimes it, it's that, just that very last little bit where it's just the toes that can still sting. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And you've, um, you've also bounced around uh, a few weight classes as well recently. Um, can you tell us like, I mean, a lot of guys, it's, it seems like it's, 
mostly I think it's trending towards um, guys fighting closer to their natural weight. Whereas before, I think you saw a lot of guys cutting huge amounts of weight to make like 135, 145, right? Um, so do you think you've kind of found a home at 135? Do you think that's where you're going to stay? Yeah, definitely. I'm still not the biggest guy in the division. Uh, I, I don't cut the most weight. I think I'm at a, a healthy one where I can have the longevity of a good career, which, which was my primary goal. When I first started fighting, I wanted to fight at 145. Uh, and that was going to be it because I walked around just maybe two or three pounds high, higher than that. Um, so I never had weight cuts really. It, it was nice until I started fighting giants who did have weight cuts from 170 and they would tower over me. And, uh, that size made up a lot for what I felt was the skill difference. They just get a hold of me and in MMA, if somebody can get a hold of you and they can control you, that's you're in for a rough night. So for me to be more competitive, to fit in a little better, uh, I thought 35 is going to be best. I'm yeah, you're right. I'm starting to see more people hang, hang around at higher weight classes. Um, like uh, Michael Kiesa is a good example. Went up from 155 and he looks like a giant at 170. I don't know how he ever made it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm hoping that's that's kind of an ongoing trend because I think that's it's going to make for better fights. It's going to keep everybody healthier. Don't have to worry about those drastic weight cuts. Um, the only reason I took that fight with Gutierrez at 45 is it was 10 day notice, and I was a little heavier than I would like to be. So. Fair enough. Yeah. No. And I think you know it, that also too. I mean, that's a great point as well, right? It's just generally i think fighters in camps at least it seems like on the outside that there's sort of an awareness now that more weight cutting is really bad especially obviously like the week out of the fight right where you're cutting the most amount of water weight obviously in just such a close period of time um i know for for me personally that was the most brutal thing i never felt like a serious um never felt a serious fatigue from it but did you find any of that personally like at 35 do you feel like there's any like energy depletion or anything like that, or you feel like it's almost the same as 45 is there, like a big difference. It's No, it's almost the same. I, I can tell you, I, I can tell I look different. Uh, my facial structure changes, but literally all fight week. Uh, I feel great. Uh, I don't know if I'm just running on water as my fuel source or what, but uh, I just feel like I can go, 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 go. So for me, I, it's good. I, I kind of, I, I enjoy a little bit of a cut just because I believe it's, it's a little ritualistic. It's kind of part of the process and, it's, it's just part of it. It always has been probably always will be. Um, if we can do it safer, that's, that's great. Um, thankfully we got people like, uh, Charles Stoll, who's one of the nutritionists, nutritionists at the PI. He does a great job of, uh, formulating a game plan for your weight cut. And yeah, that's that kind of stuff I'm grateful for. Cause it just makes that it's just a lot off the mental for that fight week. And it's fight week. There's a lot going on. So would you, would you say that it's one of the more stressful aspects of a fight camp? For some people, yeah. Not, not really for me. I don't really worry about it too much until fight week. And literally all I do is cut out carbs, uh, cut out sodium, and make weight really. Like uh, come yeah. those last, the last, uh, how many hours is that? Last 12 hours I cut maybe this time. This time was right around 10 pounds. And it wow. melted off, came off real easy. And I, I was happy about it. I, I was only on weight for like, 10 minutes tops. And then I was already rehydrating back to, back to 48 ish. So. I, I, I like that. That's interesting. So would you, would you say like, if you had like, just based on your experience, would you say to most fighters, you know, maybe cut a little bit of weight, but stay as close to your natural weight as possible. Is that what you would suggest? Stay That's what I would suggest. Yeah. I, I, I just feel like, a like, I mean, we only get one body. The longer we can make it last, the better. I doubt dropping 22 pounds in one week for anybody is going to make for like a lasting body. It's, it's just, it's a lot of damage. It's, it's rough doing that 10 pounds that I did. Um, like I said, it's part of the process and, uh, but it's not too much for me. Like, I think that's pretty, pretty comfy. I felt good. I felt strong going in there. Uh, I was pretty happy with the whole, the whole cut this time. Hey, you, that's crazy. I, I like this conversation too, just because it's such a drastic change from almost, I think basically, I think the last time I, where I feel like it was really noticeable was around, 2015 so not even like a full decade ago like fighters were really into just cutting a lot of weight and being bigger and stronger than yeah. their opponents but you see now i mean like being lighter and i think i mean i'm sure if there was a study into this it would probably find this just this is but this is mostly anecdotal i think we've noticed that most guys when they're when they're kind of going up in weight classes 
They tend to not get knocked out as easy. They seem to like not take that damage as, as poorly. They're still just as strong, probably if, if not stronger. And uh, the speed is still there. So I think it's, and for me as a, as a viewer, as a fan, it's more fun. It's more fun yeah. to see guys with more energy and things like that. Yeah, I think I think it's going to make for better fights overall, really. Uh, one of my teammates, Nathan Levy, is going up from 145 to back to 155 uh, because it just felt like his chin wasn't the same for that same, same thing. And, uh, yeah, that's, um, I think it's making for better fights. So I support it. That's crazy. That's crazy. That he actually realizes his, his chin's getting weaker. That's interesting. Uh, but speaking of energy and speaking of fun fights, the bantamweight division is probably my personal favorite division to fight uh, to to watch fights for. Uh, there's tons of great athletes there in general. Is there guys that you see um, in general? Doesn't have to be in the in the immediate that you would kind of want to match up. Anybody you want to call out? Specifically, no. I mean, everybody's calling out O'Malley. And that's because I, th I think I think part of it's due to the fights that he takes, where uh, the fights he's taking, where he's kind of getting some backlash for them, maybe not being top ranked guys, right? Um, so I've I've mentioned I would love to fight him, but so would everybody. So I get that. I'm trying to think if there's anybody super specific, other than eyeing like the the cream of the crop, the top of the division. Not really. Literally, whoever they put in front of me. I'm super down and I just want to work my way up there. And then eventually next couple okay. years be fighting for a title. What do you, what do you think is so, um, I guess illegitimate to a lot of people about Sean O'Malley. What do you think exactly bugs people, whether it's fighters, fans or, or whatever. The whole persona that he tries to put on. I, I don't think it, I think people have a keen eye for what's, what's genuine and what's fake. And I think a lot of that comes off as, as fake and, some people really support it for whatever reason. I don't know. It's uh, very interesting to me. But when you see people do stuff like get a tattoo of themselves on their neck, like <laughs> poorly drawn, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, man. So I, th I, th I think he does a lot of the things he does for attention, not really because he's, the, he's, he's, uh, he's looking to be the best. He's trying to make a good amount of money. More power to him. That, that, that's all great. It's just uh, you're not like a fighter's fighter in my mind. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's a pretty big statement though. Not a fighter's fighter. I mean, I think we all, we all know O'Malley's got his skills. He's got wins yeah. for a reason. Yeah, he's very good. I think, I think you and him though, that'd be an interesting fight. You're obviously, you know, you know, the fight with you and Gutierrez is a great example of a guy who's mm -hmm. really just not willing to back down all your fights. Really. It's, it shows that. And I think, you know, we saw O'Malley in his last fight, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't put, uh, he couldn't put his opponent away. So I think, you two together that'd be a really interesting one for sure a guy yeah. that can really yeah, sign me up it's, it's either going to be me or or my cousin ricky simone one of us going to get his hands on him so. nice i know ricky ricky simone has definitely been uh chomping at the bit to get out him so yeah looking forward to that but uh coming fresh off a win what's next in the store for you uh, i'm trying to get another fight in hopefully the end of the year okay uh, we'll see i'm waiting but uh i'm already back in the gym training trying to get better trying to get ready for the next one um I got, I got a little momentum. I would like to keep that ball rolling into 2022. So. Okay. I, I respect that. I respect that. Now, this is the No Good Podcast, right? This is a staple question here. We ask all of our illustrious guests. So we got to ask you as well, too. What is something that everyone loves, but you don't? What's no good to you? What's no good to me? Yeah. Uh, mumble rap? Is it mumble rap? <laughs> nice. Okay. Rap. I love that. I love yeah, that. I okay. A, I like that. Follow I like up that, question yeah. then. Follow up question. What okay, type okay. of music are you listening to? Like when you're in the gym and, and, and getting ready to... Um, right now, I believe my go-to is like uh, Marlon Craft. I don't know if anybody's okay. heard Marlon It's mostly rap. Uh, right now, he's kind of my go-to. Nice. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Vince, for taking so much time out of your busy schedule to come sit down with us in the No Good Podcast. We really do appreciate it. Oh, not, not a problem, dude. That was fun. It was good talking to you guys. Awesome. And just before we go, we just want to let you know, let us know, let our listeners know what do you have going next, where we can find you on social media, all of that. Uh, the best spot to find me on social media is going to be Instagram. You can find me on Twitter or you can check out some of my, uh, I kind of did a short little TikTok vlog of all fight week. I plan to keep that going. I think it came, out, came across pretty cool. It was all kind of behind the scenes stuff. Um, you can, all of those are at Vendetta135. Um, yeah, Instagram is going to be the best, but definitely keep an eye on those other ones. I'm pretty active. Awesome. You guys heard it here first. Make sure you go follow Vince on all of his social medias. Until next time, Mr. Boris with No Good Podcast. We'll see you soon.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Lingo Sports and Lingo News for a whole lot more just like this.